Today on Nerd Out, Babbage Leader Logs. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're going to take a look at Babbage Leader Logs and some of the changes there. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is our nice uh, Babbage engine there, mechanical computer. So changes for Babbage on leader logs. So the consensus model changes from T Prouse to Prouse. Um, that's that's the main change, and included in this are a number of interesting little things. So one thing that changes is our blocks. When when a block comes through, it changes from a single VRF value, or sorry. Um, Blocks now contain a single VRF value instead of separate VRF. So before there were two VRF values included in the block. There was one for the rolling knots that is used then later to calculate the epoch knots. And then there was a separate one to prove that you were, that your stake pool was the leader for a given slot. Um, those have now been combined into a single VRF value, and we'll explain that in a minute how that works. Um, there's also changes for how we go from a slot to a seed value for that input. So basically how you go from the slot number plus your pool key to roll the dice. Uh, there's some, some changes there. Uh, as a result of that, again, the, the dice rolling algorithm has, has changed a little bit. So let's talk about the block changes first. So in Alonzo, this is what a block looked like. You had this first uh, VRF value. So this is the the VRF um, value and then the then the signed proof of that VRF value. So this first one is the rolling knots and the second one is the leadership one. So as you can see, parsing and verifying two of these with every block takes extra processing power. And so we've decided to optimize that and just use one. So when we verify a block, we only have to verify one of these and then they split this out into two different VRFs so it can be used for both the nonce and for the leadership check. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the Haskell code. So they added this new function called hash VRF and depending on whether it needs to be used for leadership or nonce, it will um, spit out a different, different uh, value. So we take in the regular VRF um, so the VRF output is bytes, and then we append an L or an N to it, depending on whether it's used for leadership and knots. And then we do the Blake 2B 256 hash of that, and then that output is what it can be used for either leadership or not. So that, that kind of splits it into to be used for either, either particular use case. Uh, there's also slot to C changes. So when your stake pool is ready to see if it's a leadership for or has leader for a given slot. Um, you pass in the slot number along with the epoch nonce, the ETA zero. So in Alonzo, it's this top part here, this make seed. And you'll see we do a lot of the same stuff, but there's a slight difference. So we go all the way down, we get this slot to seed byte array, and then we're doing an XOR with the universal constant not. So that's like, um, I think it's the Blake to be hash of zero or one. I forget which my other video explained this. Um, but again, the main change here is this is no longer uh, needed with Prouse. So this was needed in T Prouse. It's no longer needed. So that line goes away and we just do the straight up. Um, we just do the, the straight up hash of this byte array. Um, and that's the output. So we don't need to combine that with the universal constant knot. So that's that's the main change there. Uh, so then we have that, that input seed. So in the old tprouse, it's make seed. In the new, we have this uh, make input VRF function, which is what we, we just saw in the last slide there. Um, but there is some changes to how leadership is checked now. 
So because we're doing the splitting of the VRF, we have to do an extra, um, we have to do that in, in our code as well. So you'll see here, we're running kind of the same things. We're doing a VRF eval certified here in the old. We're doing the VRF eval certified in the new. That's where we combine that seed with our pool key and we get this new VRF out of it. And this VRF is 64 bytes long, uh, 64 bytes long. And so we're passing that into is leader VRF allowed to lead function. And we're saying this certified VRF hex here is 64 bytes long. Down here in the other, we have to do some new magic. We have to call this VRF leader value on it again. And that's where we append or prepend the L value to the raw. And then we take the Blake to be hash of that before it goes into this is allowed to lead function. Now this Blake to be hash, it ends up um, truncating that to only 32 bytes or it, or when it does that hash, the hash output is only 32 bytes. So now our function is only 32 bytes long. And so we're still checking it the same way. Nothing there changes. Uh, the only difference is just it's, it's a shorter um, hash. So essentially we're getting a smaller dice that we're rolling. Um, it's probably not a problem, but the, um, yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. So you see here we have this um, certified natural max in this is leader VRF allowed to lead. And this is essentially giving us the size of the die we're rolling. And so the, the size of the VRF bytes matters here. Um, and so we're, we've got a two to the five, 12 power sided die in Alonzo. We have a two to the 256 power sided die in Babbage. Now, that probably doesn't matter any more than, you know, rolling a, a D100 and saying if you get a one or a two, then, then you're leader versus rolling a D50 and saying you have to get a one to be leader. It's probably not a difference, but we'll let the, um, the cryptographers verify that before we go live. Um, so what's next? As I mentioned briefly, IOG cryptographers are going to review this decrease in die size on Monday. Um, so I worked with um, with uh, Jared, I don't know how to say his last name, Corduan from IOG to, to, he helped me convert a lot of the Haskell code to something that I could use for leader logs into our manager and help me figure that out. So he's gonna reach out to the IOG cryptographers on Monday discuss this uh, decrease in, in rolling die size with them, make sure it's not a problem. Again, likely it's, it's likely not a problem uh, because the die is, is already so huge anyway, it's probably not gonna make a big deal. There's way more size to the die than there are slots in an epoch, so likely no big deal. Uh, Jor Manager 7, we've already implemented leader, leader logs for Babbage there. That's currently with the small group of testers. Um, testing on the Vassal dev network. So that's the status of that. Uh, CNCLI also needs these updates, um, but we haven't started making these leader log updates yet. We have some backlog work to clean up. So it was currently relying on a networking library communicating Cardo chain that I had built originally. Um, that's kind of old, outdated. There's been other Rust people that have come into the uh, community like Santiago Car Carmuga. I don't know how to say his name. Um, he's put out a, a new library uh, called Palace. There's a whole bunch of contributors, you know, a lot of people from the ITN days, a lot of people from DC Spark contributing to this Palace library. So it's kind of what we want to standardize on for all of our Rust tooling. And so I'm going to be porting CNCLI over to use the, these palace libraries. Um, so far I've only converted the CNCLI ping command. Hopefully a lot of the other commands will be converted um, and leader logs hopefully later this, this coming week. Um, also firehose, I've got some updates to do there. They're not affected by these particular leader log changes because firehose doesn't care about leader logs. It's not for uh, a stake pool or anything like that. But there are other vassal changes such as a, um, a vassal transaction. Uh, I believe some of the transaction outputs switch over from using CBOR lists to CBOR maps. 
uh, likely due to um, you know some of the inline datums and, and other changes that are now allowed there for Basel transactions. So I have to update Firehose to make sure it can handle both lists and maps because when we get these new Basel blocks, sometimes they have transactions that are Vassal, sometimes they have Alonzo transactions, sometimes they have Mary transactions, and you've got to be able to parse all of those and make sense of it in, in Firehose. So, so the, the final question that um, some of the community have been asking is, are we going to hard fork on June 29th? And I'm going to say probably not. Um, IOG has given us this date in several venues, um, but and I'm not sure why they haven't really announced a change to this yet, but to me it's pretty clear that this isn't really a feasible target given how many changes are going into Babbage. There's a lot of community changes, so all those community tools will need to be updated, tested, be ready to go before we actually flip the switch on mainnet. Um, my ideal would be to see six epochs between a fork on the testnet and a fork on mainnet, that gives parties beyond IOG, you know, whether they're uh, apps, dApps, um, DEXs, uh, centralized exchanges, gives them all time to fully vet that they're capable of processing things on um, after the Basel hard fork and in, in the Babbage era. Um, we did give a lot of feedback to IOG. The last hard fork, hard fork that was very clear you know, they didn't give us enough time. Um, everything was, was very rushed and some things were still broken when we shipped it. And there had to be like another update a few weeks afterwards. It's like, it's not, it's, we're not the move fast and break stuff chain. So ideally we should just accept the FUD that's gonna come up, come from outside the community, just accept it with grace. Ignore it like we always do and move beautifully into this wonderful, amazing Babbage era where things are fast. Um, and that's all I've got. So with that, nerd out.